this country. In Romans chapter 7, I'm going to begin reading verse number 14. Paul says, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man I am who will rescue me from this body of death. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. This morning I want to talk from this thought, if you only knew my addiction. If you only knew my addiction. Let me just lead in this way. Let me, everybody loves a good story. Let me tell you just a, uh, just a nice little hypothetical story. Tell you about a guy named Mike. One day Mike was hanging out with some friends and some friends had some Skittles. Mike had never had Skittles. And they said, Mike, you have got to try these Skittles. And Mike said, okay, let me try the Skittles. And Mike loved the Skittles. A couple days passed and all Mike could think about was Skittles. He would wake up thinking about Skittles. And every time Mike had extra money, he would go and buy him some Skittles. Mike would even start replacing his meals with Skittles. And then Mike would find a time to get Skittles in between Skittle meals. Mike started keeping Skittles on his person. And then he'd keep Skittles in his desk at work. He would have Skittles everywhere because he never knew when he needed Skittles. Mike began to get belligerent when he didn't have Skittles. And when he couldn't get a hold to Skittles, Mike was not a pleasant person to be around. And finally, somebody brought it to Mike's attention, Mike, you got a problem with these Skittles. Mike said, I can stop Skittles anytime I want. And so Mike kept on with Skittles. Finally, Mike started noticing that things started happening in his financial life. Mike didn't have gas money. And so Mike would park the car, but he would get Skittles. Mike started uh, losing utilities in his home. Mike started stealing money from his wife. Mike started 
pawning things around the house. Mike started showing up to work late. Mike started calling in multiple times a week. Mike started showing up in the same clothes over and over. And Mike always said, I can stop Skittles anytime I want. Finally, Mike's wife said, Mike, it's either Skittles or it's us. You can't have both. So Mike stopped Skittles, went back to work, started paying his bills. But one day, Skittles started calling. And Mike found himself chasing Skittles. All of us know Mike, don't we? We, we all have run across a Mike somewhere, haven't we? Mike lives in our houses. He lives on our street. Mike sits in our pews. Mike even teaches our children. Mike stands in our pulpits. Mike drives our buses. Mike enforces the law. Mike sees after patients. Mike is a nurse, Mike is a doctor, Mike is a lawyer. Mike can be anybody, a mother, a father, a law-abiding citizen. Mike can be anybody. And you know what? None of us in here are exempt from suffering the same fate as Mike. And so, we want to give voice to the real pain that is at play in life. And that is the pain of addiction. Addiction is to give oneself up to a strong habit. Any impulsive, habitual behavior that has taken root in our lives that can become difficult to shake. And so we all know Mike or we have been Mike at some point or maybe we are Mike right now. And I want to tell you that addiction is a real disease. I don't want anybody in here thinking now that anybody who suffers from addiction, it is because they are a weak person or because you are a stronger person or because you are a better person. The truth is that addiction can afflict any and everybody and none of us are exempt. For addiction is an emotional disease. It is idolatry. Addiction prevents us from freely knowing God and others. And I'll let you in on a little secret. Addiction is not just a matter of drugs and alcohol. After all, Mike was addicted to Skittles. And Skittles got in between Mike and his life. They got in between Mike and God. Got in between Mike and his family. Got in between Mike and his career. So don't down Mike because your thing might not be Skittles. It might be achievement. You could be addicted to achievement. It might be gambling. It might be drugs. It might be alcohol. It might be sex. It might be pornography. It might be accolades. It might, you might just be addicted to just, you know, of shopping you're not breaking no laws but you know that you just have to be buying something all the time you hide and stuff when you come in you you itching at night thinking about the next day you you trying to figure out you trying to go get an advance on the paycheck so that you can go shopping it is an addiction and addictive behavior is real and guess what there are folk who love Jesus just like you do and they struggle with addiction there are people who love God just like you do don't think that people who struggle with addiction are satanic evil, dark, sadistic people. They are ordinary people who bleed blood just like you and they stand in the need of the prayer and God's favor and God's blessing and they love him no less than you do. And they sit in our pews and they lift holy hands and they cry unto God and they make promises unto God. Lord, if you just liberate me, I promise I won't go back to Skittles anymore. And as soon as we pronounce the benediction, 
They exit the sanctuary and they find Skittles. Fiction is real. And it is something that we must accept. That we ought not be afraid of it. We ought not put some kind of ugly face on it and act as if it will contaminate us and leave those who suffer and struggle to fend for themselves. But in the scripture here, Paul captures the essence of addiction. And there are a few things that I would raise for us as we struggle with the hidden pain in our lives. And my prayer will be, as it has always been, that somebody would find a hope as they hear their own inward struggle addressed. My brother or sister, I don't know what your addiction is and it's none of my business, neither is it any of anybody else's business. But God knows what you struggle with. And God wants you to know that there is hope and it doesn't matter how many times you said you'd stop or it doesn't matter how many times you've relapsed, but as long as the blood runs warm in your vein, there is still time for God to do what only God can do. Will you trust him today? Concerning addiction, the first thing we need to understand is that addiction is stronger than desire. I get so tired of people who talk about, you know, I don't even know why they just, why, I don't know what the deal is. All they got to do is just stop. That is just foolishness. Do you think that every crack addicted person that you see, do you think that their lives have fallen apart because that's what they wanted for themselves? Do you think that people who struggle with addiction have made this choice and woke up and it was their life? dream and their goal to destroy everything that mattered to them and the people around them for the sake of their addiction do you believe that's what they choose for themselves well you see Paul says that what I want to do I do not do addicted personalities and people who struggle with addiction they want to have productive lives they want to be promoted just like you they want the nice car like you they want the nice house like you they want the nice family like you they want the nice reputation like you they want to be able to clap their hands they want to be able to sleep at night they don't want to feel the pain of withdrawal they want to be productive they want to know that God loves them they want to know that when they wake up in the morning they won't have this thing over their head they want Want all of what you have and what you enjoy and just because they want it does not mean that they can have it Paul said that what I want to do I do not do there are addicts who want to live clean lives but they find themselves incapable there are people who struggle with addiction and they, how many times do you think they've told themselves, I don't want to do this anymore. And yet they are still trapped. And if you know what I'm talking about, you all you got to say is preach, Pastor Earl. There are people who have been there and don't be ashamed if you've been there. But thanks be to God, you are not there anymore. Don't be ashamed of your testimony. Don't be ashamed of your journey. Don't be ashamed of the fact that God had to deliver you out of the muck and the miry clay and put your feet on a rock just because this has been your journey tell somebody that the Lord's deliverance is real and it is God who delivers and saves us from this he says I have the desire to do what is good but I can't carry it out that is the addicted person's cry I want so bad to stop but I can't Stop looking at me like I'm less than a person because I have this disease. People with cancer, we look on them with pity, but people with addictions, we look on them with disgust as if they chose to have this. There's nothing that makes you any better than them. And so listen, addiction is stronger than the will or the desire to be good. There are people, don't you know, people want to love God just like you do? Don't you know there are people who really want to be able to feel confident in who they are and know that God is pleased with their service? Don't you know there are people who are tied up in knots and they are dying a slow death on the inside because they know how they live is in contradiction to what they say and profess publicly? 
They want to do good, but they are incapable of it. Their desire, God knows they want to do good, but for whatever reason, the addiction still comes calling. The addiction comes knocking 24-7. They are caught in a perpetual state of bondage and prison, and they want relief. Don't you know they want to be free from the addiction? They want to know what it feels like to be liberated. They want to have control over their own lives and their own income, but they are just incapable. And guess what? There are no exemptions from this struggle. Tell you why, because if breaking the cycle were a matter of sincerity and desire, there would be no addicts. If it was just that easy, you know, we tell people, oh, won't you just say no? Why don't you just stop? You don't help anybody when you tell them you need to just stop doing that. Just stop. How many times has the addict tried to just stop? In fact, the addict's cry is, I did stop, but I couldn't stay stopped. I tried to stop cold turkey, but it kept calling my name. And guess what? There are those of us who, who, who try to boast and brag as if we are better than that, but there's some stuff that calls your name. Just because we don't see you stumbling over yourself and just because you dress nice does not mean that there's not something that has you in its vice. There are no exemptions from this dark journey. Then there's another thing. Addiction. See, addiction is not something that is overcome by just a desire. It, it is far deeper than you being able to say, I'm going to stop. The reason why is because addiction is a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle and it is a matter, it is the constant tug of war. And it's manifesting itself, it's a manifestation of a larger battle. I'm talking about darkness and light, the, the battle between heaven and hell, good and evil, God and Satan, that, that this battle is a battle that rages 24 seven and your soul is prime real estate. And when we get caught in addiction, it is not just a matter of us choosing something and desiring something to satisfy our flesh, but rather it is a matter of Satan getting the better of us and not willing to let go, but God's still fighting because we belong to him. And so we can't help but get caught in the middle, caught in the battle and God is telling us still that he's got us in his grip of grace but Satan is still saying but I still want him and I will not let go and so Satan will continue to trip us up to make us sweet to hurt us to harm us because he desires us that he may sift us as wheat this is a spiritual battle and therefore it cannot be assessed and treated strictly as a physiological illness. Addiction is not something that we just simply diagnose and take two pills and call me in the morning. Addiction is something that it starts in our minds and it takes up residence in our hearts. That's why your will is not strong enough for you to just stop. There is something greater at work here. And Paul understands it. But Paul says that it is no longer I who do it, but it is the sin that lives inside of me. It is a matter of sin and we are all prone. That's why we don't have the How dare we look down on people who are addicted to something? The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, then you don't have the right to be able to, to, to look down on somebody because they are in addiction and you are not. And you certainly don't have the right to look down on somebody knowing if God had to deliver you. Sometimes we get it all twisted up, acting like we've always been delivered. But you have not always been delivered. God can remember a time where he found you sloppy drunk, where he found you high as a kite, where he found you clicking in the midnight hours, where he found you tipping into the store and ducking out where he found you going where nobody else thought you would ever be there are times where you were in darkness and you thought nobody saw it but God was right there watching you all the time but if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side 
You could have been taken out by your addiction, but only by the grace of God has God delivered you. And so because God has delivered you, you ought to be able to give God praise and let him know, Lord, if it had not been for you, I would still be right there. Somebody's there right now and they need to know that there is some hope. Church, we got to stop telling addicts that it's their fault while they're in the position that they're in. They made a choice, but after a while, Satan can take over. Sure, they made the choice, but Satan gets the grip, and I don't care how bad you want to get out. You're not strong enough to defeat the enemy. You, 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 can't, you, can't, you can't beat Satan by yourself. I don't care how saved you think you are, how many scriptures you think you can quote. Satan knows your weakness. Satan knows your point, your soft spots. Satan knows what's in the thoughts of your mind. Satan knows what you don't want nobody else to know about you. Satan can take your self-righteous attitude and use it against you. And Satan can turn your gossiping spirit into one of idolatry and addiction as well. Yeah, there's some folk out there, they are addicted to gossip and news and, and, and dirty news about somebody else. There are people, they just have to be in the know. They got to keep the rumor mill going. They got to keep the stuff going. They got to call people and say, let me tell you about so-and-so. Did you hear about so-and-so, child? I heard this. Did you hear this? Did you hear that? Oh, ain't that a shame? We probably need to pray for them. But let me tell you this though before we pray. And, and so now you think you are so saved. But Satan has you in his clutches because you are still caught up in darkness. And you'd rather celebrate somebody else's demise than pray for their deliverance. This is a spiritual battle. It's a matter of sin and we are all prone. We are all slaves to eventually serve the sin within us. So Paul, that's what we need to understand here. That, that, that sin resides within you. That, 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 that you cannot escape sin. You cannot insulate yourself from sin. I don't care what kind of chest protection you buy. You can buy a cross made of the purest gold and sin will still be there. It doesn't matter how many Christian t-shirts you have hanging in your wardrobe. And it doesn't matter what your designer's religious orientation is. It doesn't matter where you send your dollars and who you pay your tithes to. It does not matter. You cannot escape the presence of sin. All of us sin and have fallen short of the glory of God. And there was but one man who was without sin and his name was Jesus. So don't go around telling folk you don't sin no more. Because in fact you just sin right there. You told a lie. All of us have the propensity to sin. All of us have the potential to break the heart of God. How dare you point out what's wrong with me when you got the plank in your own eye. How dare you pass judgment against somebody else when you got your own stuff breaking down in your own life I love the songwriters when they say sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine that addiction is a matter of sin and it is a sickness it is an illness it is a spiritual battle that rages 24-7 Sure, we can diagnose it, but there is a vicious cycle in addiction. And there are people in here who are very familiar with this cycle. You have been through all the treatment programs, you've read the books, you've been through the counseling regiments, you have had the, the consultations, you have been to the Pine Rest, you've been to the Network 180s, you've been to this hospital, you've been to this psychiatric institute, you realize now you've heard people say just say no and all it does is frustrates you, you've heard people say that you can do anything you put your mind to, all of that, but the truth is this is a spiritual battle, the war is on and Satan is on his game but I got good news today I got good news today I want anybody in here to know that if you are caught in addiction there is hope because freedom is possible 
You can be free. You don't always have to be shackled and bound. Maybe it doesn't feel like it today, but you can live a liberated life. Maybe it doesn't feel like it today, but you can be free. Maybe you can't see hope on the horizon, but as long as that grave is empty, as long as there's nobody hanging on that cross, as long as Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf, promising to come back for us, as long as Jesus is King Jesus, you have the power to live above your addiction. You have the ability to live free from crack, free from cocaine, free from alcohol, free from shopping, free from gambling, free from skittles, free from lying, free from cheating, free from stealing, free from hoarding, free from this sin, free from that sin. You can be free. And whom the Son sets free, let him be free indeed. That you can be free. For addiction is like a prison that confines and restricts us. Paul realized that wherever I go, evil is right there with me. Evil has my hands bound, has my feet bound, got my mind tied up. And finally, out of frustration, Paul said, I've been trying to figure this out on my own, but who can deliver me from this body of death? And he gets his own answer. He says, but thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. Now, Paul understands that I am delivered by Christ. And so right now, just you, you know what? Stop telling folk that if they're Christians, they ought not be addicted. Christian folk have addictions as well. Stop letting people tell you now that so-and-so can't be saved if they acting like that. No, maybe you need to think about maybe you can't be saved acting the way you act. Addiction is real, but the difference is this, that you can be victorious. In fact, you are already victorious because Jesus has already died for that sin. Jesus has died for addiction. Jesus has conquered death, hell, and the grave. And so when he got up on Sunday morning, he got up with you in mind. He got up with your addiction in mind. He got up with your victory in mind. Jesus is the liberator. If you don't believe me, all you got to do is read through the Gospels. If you read that early on in the Gospel of Matthew, he encounters a demoniac there in the cemetery who is cutting himself and crying out at night. And Jesus liberates him by casting out that whole legion of demons from him. And he is a free man. You don't believe me? Jesus is a liberator. He stands there in Bethany outside of the tomb of dead Lazarus. And he calls out, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus comes forth with his hands tied and his feet tied and Jesus says loose him and let him go you don't believe me Jesus is the liberator there was a woman over in Samaria who was caught in sin and Jesus told her everything she ever did and he said baby a time will come where God's people shall worship him not on that mountain or that mountain but they will worship him in spirit and in truth he tells her now you go into the city and you tell them you met a man named Jesus and she went and she said come see a man who told me everything I ever did Jesus is a liberator if you don't believe me you keep on reading in the gospels there and Jesus knows how to break every yoke he tears down every stronghold he delivers everybody who's been shackled he says that I have come to set the captives free they led him on Friday night they hung him high from the throes of addiction. Maybe it doesn't feel like it today, but you keep on fighting. You keep on praying. You keep on trusting. You keep on believing. You keep on walking with God. You keep on trusting God. You keep working a 12-step program. And the first step is a step towards God. The second step is a second step of forgiveness. The third step is a step of saying, Lord, I need you. And the next step, Lord, I need you.
working with you. The Bible says that he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it until the end. Tell somebody, yeah, I might have stumbled, but the Lord is still working on me. Tell somebody, yeah, I got tripped up along the way, but God is not finished with me. Be 